Right now at 11, cheers when survivors are pulled from the rubble. Cries of pain as bodies are discovered. Tonight in Italy, the death toll from the earthquake is climbing, and it is just not clear yet how many people are missing. Thank you for joining us. I'm Leslie Foster. And I'm Adam Longo. Just 24 hours after that earthquake, rescue workers are still struggling through the wreckage for signs of life. It's happening in the small towns of central Italy, towns being visited by thousands of vacationers in the final days of summer. WSA 9 Stephanie Gailhart joining us now live from the Satellite Center. And Stephanie, you've been monitoring some new numbers that are coming in. Adam, yeah, the death toll is now up to 159 people and more than 100 people are injured. This earthquake happened about 100 miles outside Rome. The earthquake reduced three towns in central Italy to rubble. The destruction from the 6.2 magnitude quake sparked desperate search efforts. Many, like this child, miraculously pulled from the rubble alive. Back at home in D.C. at the Italian embassy today, flags at half staff. The ambassador spoke with me about the tragedy, saying Italy has a history of earthquakes. What happened back in 2009 in L'Aquila came to our mind, but every time is a, is a new tragedy, new sufferance. This time, the three the three towns which have been you know mostly affected are well known to to Italians. They're beautiful towns. He says he's thankful for the outpouring of support. I'm really impressed by, by the number of calls and messages we have been receiving. We have so many friends. People like them. I'm shocked and saddened. You know, I have family members there. The family members I have are all okay, but I know there's others, you know, who aren't as fortunate. The death toll is expected to rise as rescue teams work through the rubble. Regular aftershocks pose a continuing threat. When there aren't interventions for the long term, then that's when it becomes sad because you go back and you see that areas are still devastated and the help arrived at first and then people get forgotten. So let's just hope these won't get forgotten. We'll have to, to restore and to ensure that these communities can come back to life. More than 1,000 people lost their homes. Italy's Red Cross set up a general fund to help support those who lost everything. Reporting live tonight inside the Satellite Center, I'm Stephanie Galehart at WUSA 9. Thanks, Stephanie. And we're, of course, following this developing story out of Italy. You can do the same thing on our free WUSA 9 app. We will provide news alerts and the latest information. You can get it whenever you want it. We're also monitoring reports out of Afghanistan, where the report on the American University there is said to be over. But as many are, as seven people are dead in an attack, militants with guns and explosives hit the campus in Kabul as hundreds of students were attending night classes. Government forces killed at least two attackers. So far, no claim of responsibility for the assault. Now, we should point out that that school is not affiliated with American University here in D.C. Tonight in campaign 2016 coverage, some harsh words from Republican candidate Donald Trump. At a rally in Jackson, Mississippi, a short time ago, Trump called Clinton, and I'm quoting here, a bigot who sees people of color only as votes, not as human beings worthy of a better future. Now, the words come as Trump is supposed to be working to increase his appeal with African-American voters. One reporter at that speech said it was not an ad lib, and the word bigot was actually in the teleprompter. In an interview a short time after with CNN, Hillary Clinton responded by reminding viewers of the poet Maya Angelou. That quote, she said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. It's a phrase she used earlier this week to talk about Trump's controversial comments then. A lot of damage, but somehow no serious injuries have been reported after multiple tornadoes touched down in central Indiana. Some apartment buildings had their roofs just blown off. A Starbucks was sort of flattened to the ground by a twister. And when you look at these pictures, it's hard to believe more people weren't hurt. Most of the damage is centered around Kokomo. That is north of Indianapolis, a town of about 56,000. Many of them without power tonight and so many more Pretty shaken up tonight. I tried to push the door and the wind was just blowing so fast and it blew up. I came out, I was just sick, stirred because I've never seen it like this in my life. And then I shut the door and then it blew my window out. And then that was it. I just ran downstairs. I was just so scared. 
Governor Mike Pence says he will tour those storm damaged counties tomorrow to assess the damage up close. Chief Meteorologist Topper Shutt is tracking that storm damage. And top also a storm in the tropics that could possibly impact our weekend. Yeah, first we'll look at the, uh, the storm reports of the tornadoes in the Midwest. I mean, almost two dozen. Now these are not confirmed, but and some of them are probably double reported. Oftentimes one tornado is reported twice, but still you get a pretty good indication of the outbreak between Indianapolis and up toward uh, Toledo and through Fort Wayne. There'll be more damage uh, by tomorrow's uh, dawn. All right, we'll look at the tropic satellite. This is the tropical storm Gaston, and we have the remnants of Fiona just south of Bermuda, but this is the storm we're watching. It's about 100 miles north of uh, San Juan right now. It is not a tropical storm, but it looks like it could be 